This is the world's greatest man-made waterway. As early as the 16th century, people dreamed of a canal which could link the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. It took over 150,000 workers 20 years of toil to dig the 50-mile passage. On average, 600 workers died for each mile of canal hewn from the tropical jungle. Since it was completed in 1913, almost a million ships have passed through the Panama Canal. Before the canal, it took six weeks to sail from New York to San Francisco via the treacherous seas around Cape Horn. Now it can be done in just three weeks. The Panama Canal crosses the narrowest part of the Central American Isthmus. Panama has a mountainous interior, so the canal is not a simple trench between oceans. Rather, it is a lock and lake system that carries ships up and over the high ground. The Panama Canal is an ingenious water elevator. It lifts ships 85 feet from sea level via a series of locks and then lowers them back down again on the other side. The Eleonora is designed to squeeze through the locks and cuts of the canal. She's about the size of the Titanic. Tugboats buzz around her as she approaches the Miraflores lock at the Pacific end of the canal. Steering a 27,000 ton ship into a narrow lock is like trying to park a juggernaut on a sheet of ice. By law, only specially trained pilots can take ships through the canal system. Stop engine. Stop engine. Oscar Soto has been a Panama Canal pilot for 10 years. Now passing 327, sir. At that we go to the port wing, please. Port wing? Yes. Beach it. Beach it. Beach it. Lager beach it, sir. The Eleanor's captain must surrender his authority to Oscar while the ship is in the canal. Panama Canal is the only place in the world so far, as I know, that the pilot takes full control of the navigation of the ship. With millions of dollars as well as human lives resting on his shoulders, it's not a job for the faint-hearted. 420! Thank you! Oscar feels the shifting currents beneath his feet and watches for trouble like a hawk. We can lose the engine, we can lose the rudder. There could be a failure in the locks. So we have to be ready for everything. Dead floor ahead. A pilot must always think two steps ahead. The Eleonora only has inches of room on either side. Dead floor ahead. The gates shut and the water level rises until it equalizes with the chamber ahead. The gates open and the ship moves on. The Miraflores locks raise the Eleonora 54 feet above sea level. Ready, three, one, four. She sails on towards the Culebra Cut, a nine-mile gorge carved from the rock of the Continental Divide. 
It was here that the first attempt to dig a canal in the 1870s failed. The workforce nicknamed the cut Hell's Gorge. French engineer Ferdinand de Lesseps had built the Suez Canal and thought he could do the same in Panama. But after seven years of fighting malaria, yellow fever, and a brutal climate, the French had excavated only one-tenth of the canal. More than 20,000 workers lost their lives. De Lesseps abandoned the project, bankrupt and insane. Fifteen years later, the U.S. government thought it could succeed where the French had failed. Steam shovels enabled the Americans to excavate more in a day than the French had managed in a month. Temperatures in the Culebra Cut rose to 120 degrees Fahrenheit at noon, and with blasting and landslides, this was the most hazardous area of construction. It involved removing millions and millions of cubic yards of rock, solid rock. And at one point, there were 13,000 people working there. It was 12-hour shifts, very intensive schedule, day after day, only Sundays off. Almost 100 years later, blasting still goes on. Canal widening is part of the modernization program designed to increase the flow of traffic through the canal. 13,000 ships a year negotiate its locks and waterways at an average toll of $56,000 each. After passing through the Culebra Cut, ships sail on to Lake Gatun. The 164 square miles of Lake Gatun were created to provide the water needed to work the locks. The rainforest is responsible for Panama's high annual rainfall, which keeps the lake topped up. But the forest is under threat. Two-thirds of it has been chopped down this century. If the destruction continues, the canal could be in danger within a decade. On average, 33 ships a day pass through the canal's three sets of locks. Each one uses 52 million gallons of water, a loss to Lake Gatun of 3 billion gallons every day, the equivalent of 3,000 Olympic swimming pools. When ships reach the end of Lake Gatun, they are lowered down to sea level through the Gatun locks. These locks are a giant machine of concrete, steel, and water. Once through the Gatun locks, it's plain sailing out into the Atlantic. The creation of a water passage across Panama was one of the great human achievements the realization of a 400-year-old dream. These 50 miles between the oceans are among the hardest ever won by human hands. <laughs>